Okay, so we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about each group. So the first group is going to be those non-vascular plants, and that's the mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. So one thing about these guys is they require water to reproduce. So what's going to happen is there's going to be the female part called the archegonium, and then there's the male part called the antheridium. The female part makes the egg, and the male part makes the sperm. So what happens is the sperm actually needs rainwater to get over to the egg. And in this life cycle picture here, um, you can see this is an archegonium, this thing right here with the egg in it, and then this is an antheridia with the sperm in it. And so this is at the tips of the gametophytes, and what's going to happen is rainwater is going to bring the sperm to that egg and then fertilize it. Okay, so um, that's one important thing to remember about these guys. Um, the other thing is that these guys don't have true roots, but they have something that's almost like a root, and that's called a rhizoid. So remember, if you see RHY or RHI, most of the time that's talking about roots or something with roots growing off of it, because RHI and RHY means roots. Okay. Um, then we've got our liverworts, and the reason they're called liverworts is because someone looked at them from the side and said, wow, that looks like the shape of a liver. Liverworts! And then I talked about hornworts where they said, wow, that has horns. Hornwort! Um, so these botanists are pretty wacky with their names, aren't they? Um, then the next group is going to be our seedless vascular plants. So these ones have water-conducting tissues, but they don't make seeds, so they make spores. Um, so we, talk, we call those homosporous because they're making one type of spore. Heterosporous is going to be what seed producing plants end up being. Um, so they're going to have a xylem and a phloem. That's really important about them. Um, they can also have specialized leaves, stems, roots. They're going to have cuticles. They're going to have stomata. So they're going to have all of those things that we were talking about before. And in future um, chapters, we'll get into specialized stems, leaves, roots, and those types of things. Um, so, there's going to be seven phyla of vascular plants. Angiosperms, which are flowering plants. Conifers, which are the ones that make cones. Um, actually, a lot of these are going to make cones. Um, cycads, the one that looked like a palm tree with a cone in it. Um, neophytes, which is going to, uh, you'll see it in the next chapter, but it's going to be this um, plant that grows in arid environments um, that makes cones. Ginkgo, you might have heard of ginkgo biloba before, um, and that has a fan-shaped leaf, and we'll look at that in the next chapter. Then we have ferns, and then these last three are actually one group, horsetails, whisk ferns, and club mosses. I kind of tried to separate them out with a semicolon, and then you could see these guys are, don't have that, so those last three are one group. Um, so the ferns are going to be a very successful seedless vascular plant. And um, now when we look at a fern life cycle, first I want you to look at this moss life cycle again. Now in the moss, when you think about moss, you think of green fuzzy stuff, right? And that is going to be the gametophyte structure that you have here. Um, the sporophyte is going to be this little brown thing growing out of here. So the dominant site, uh, part of the cycle for a moss is going to be the gametophyte stage. Now that's going to be different when we um, talk about a fern. A fern is going to still have that gametophyte made the gametes. Gametes are going to make a zygote that forms into a sporophyte and everything. But when you think of a fern, you're used to seeing this big leafy part, and that is the sporophyte. So the sporophyte is the dominant stage of the fern's life cycle. So that's going to be really important to remember. Okay, so ferns are going to have structures called rhizomes. Now when you see RHI, you're thinking roots, right? And you're close. But that's an underground stem that has roots growing off of it. So it's close, but it's not a true root. Another part of them is the frond, and that's going to be the big leafy part. And then finally, the sori. Now the sori are going to be these dots you see on the underside of the leaf, and those are actually making spores. So it doesn't mean the plant has a disease or something like that, but that's going to actually help the plant to reproduce. Um, and so those are some important parts of those. So if we go back to your notes, rhizome, fronds, and sori we just talked about, and in the next chapter we'll get in a little bit more detail about some other fun things.